Well, good Wednesday evening to you. We want to welcome you to our Wednesday night prayer meeting by Facebook Live. Uh, it is hard to believe that we are now nearly a month into a at-home church service setting as we battle the coronavirus. Please let's continue to pray for our country in these days. Many are calling uh, this week uh, our Pearl Harbor of the 21st century. Uh, yesterday, nearly 2,000 people in our country lost their life. It looks like before today is over with, we're going to be at a number uh, very similar to that. Uh, so much going on in these days, but I'm glad in this hour that the Lord is still on the throne. And as many of you watched our video that we posted on Facebook and YouTube yesterday, in the words of S.M. Lockridge, uh, he's my king, uh, he's in charge. He's able and we can trust Him in this hour. So thank you for allowing us to come into your living room, come to your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you're viewing this at. Perhaps you're with your job in a hotel room, uh, somewhere watching this video. Thank you for allowing us to have church together. And we're looking forward here in the middle of the week, in the middle of this storm, in the middle of this dark mile, uh, to looking to Jesus, uh, to those who perhaps are listening to us in Hookerton in the surrounding area close to our church on you know, FM 100.1. We welcome you to the service as well tonight. And as we've been doing, I encourage you during the song time, sing along. When we receive our offering for those who do online giving, go ahead and give if you've yet to mail in your tithes and offerings this week. Uh, may it be a mental note to do so. Have your Bible following along, making and taking notes as we worship the Lord together. And we have someone in the house tonight that's going to help bring some special music in a few moments. That's going to be a tease. We'll tell you who that is in just a few moments. But again, thank you for tuning in. Let's get it ready to do some singing. You sing out in your house as Brother Andrew leads us. What do you have for us, Brother Andrew? Um, in any situation of life where, where we are facing, um, we can be thankful for all that God has done for us, and He still deserves all praise and glory. So let's start with coming to his presence. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, your voice is raised, your voice is raised. Give Worship Him tonight. We hope you're singing along with us. You're going to be following along like the pastor said through the word. And that way we will be worshiping together. So as we open up the service, just going to ask prayer for, of course, Alan Walston. Uh, there was a good update. Uh, he was able to breathe on his own for uh, maybe around 24 hours, it seems. Uh, so they're still waiting on the room so they can go up to Durham. Also, Harry Joyner and Gene Goff as well. 
Um, they're waiting to find out, you know, uh, some results on different things and then they have some physical needs. Uh, also, our school parents, as they uh, teach the children, I know that uh, my wife and I are also working hard at that and it's amazing how much patience I do not have. So y'all pray for us if you would. So let's all uh, approach the throne together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we praise you. We thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord, and all you're going to do for us, Lord. We know during this time, Lord, we can trust in you. We know, Lord, that uh, we don't have anything to worry about, God. Uh, God, we're just going to put it in your hands, Lord, and worship you throughout all the circumstances that are going on, Father, and then continue to put you first. And may your gospel reach more ears than it's ever reached before. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, good to have you watching tonight. And those who are going to be listening to the CV CD or watching the DVD, thank you so much for that. Just going to give you a couple of announcements. Of course, tomorrow night we've been having our team Bible study at 7 o'clock. And we've had more each week. We're going to use the app Zoom again. Uh, if you want to know how to do that, maybe to get your teen on there, just uh, you can email me, you can uh, text me, you can get in tr uh, touch with the church, and they'll let you know. But just have to download that Zoom app, and they can be a part of the service tomorrow night. Also, Easter Sunday coming up. Now, last week it, we had a precious service. It was wonderful. Uh, being able, even though it was a long ways away, it was good to see your faces and good to have you on the premises. And we're going to do it again, weather permitting. And we're going to ask the Lord to bless this service. So it'll be unlike any Easter service we've ever had before. And uh, we know the Lord can touch our hearts no matter where we're at. Now, at this time, we're going to go through the Mount Calvary vault and have another choir song.
and amen. Thank God for Jesus the One. Boy, that was a little bit of a quick stop there. And so, zoom, we run up here. It reminds me of sometimes on television programs when they have a technical malfunction, they'll say, you know, please excuse our technical malfunction. Well, uh, we had a technical malfunction, but I'm glad that Jesus is still the one. And we want to give you a chance at home tonight to sing praises to his name. Let's lift up our voices and worship King Jesus. What do you have for us with Andrew? Um, I love the words of the hymn we're going to sing right now. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. I hear the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me. this difficult time to be thankful for and we've come to that time here on our Wednesday night service where you have an opportunity to give now I realize here for the last month we have not been able to give in the traditional way that we have grown up our entire lives giving you come to church you pass the offering plate you put your tithes and offerings in the offering plate but we do have in these days three different methods where you can now give and now actually somewhat of a fourth method of course method number one a number of folks have taken advantage of this for those who are at home watching on Facebook live you can go right now to Mount Calvary fwbchurch.com and on our home page of our website at the bottom you'll see the word donate if you click on that word donate there is a feature where you can play but pay by PayPal and do your weekly tithes and offerings online a number of people are doing that we may have folks who are watching who do not attend Mount Calvary Church you may be watching from another county from another state and you want to be a blessing and be a help uh, as you are getting your spiritual groceries here in these days encourage you as one way to give another way you can give is the old-fashioned way through mailing in your weekly tithes and offerings you can send that to Mount Calvary Free Will Baptist Church that's P.O. Box 250, Hookerton, North Carolina, 
28538. And then a third method is during the week from Monday to Friday from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Brother Kevin and Miss Karen are here specifically to receive folks who are coming in that want to drop off in person their Sunday uh, morning, Sunday night or Wednesday night tithes and offerings. Now I mentioned a fourth method. As you know, starting last Sunday, Lord willing, every Sunday, weather permitting, we're having what's called drive-in church services. At 11 a.m., folks are able to drive on the property in their automobile and from a safe distance can tune in their radio, listen to the service as folks are watching it on Facebook Live, and then as you exit off the property, we have little pedestals and baskets set up where you can drop in your tithes and offerings after you leave the service. And so what we're going to do at this time is we've got a slide up on the screen that shows you the address for online giving. Brother Andrew is going to play some offertory music, and we're going to give you a chance to give right now. Thank you so much, Brother Andrew. If you would, go ahead and look at the screen. We have our prayer sheet that uh, is there for you to look at each Wednesday. It is downloaded, so you can take a look at that. And we're going to go over this together. Uh, we're going to be praying our ministry this week. We're going to be praying for the young at heart. And we know that you miss all those outings with the rights. Uh, and we just pray that hopefully this will be over soon. can go ahead and get back to normal on that. Staff member, Wendy Letchworth, home missionary, Terry and Tammy Miller. Foreign missionary Andy and Andrea uh, Moore, uh, college student Hunter Miller, military personnel Alex Velarde, elected official Richard Burr, and then we have those in the assisting living facilities. Uh, also at Vidant, we have Alan Walston at Wait, we have Timmy Grant, and then there are so many, so many needs, spiritual and physical, going on. So let's pray, uh, pray with me now. We'll pray over the prayer sheet and ask the Lord's will on all of these. Heavenly Father, Lord, again, thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to be here tonight, Lord, to, uh, Lord, to worship you, Father, and to be able to broadcast to so many, Lord, in their homes or wherever they may be, God. And we're coming to you now, Lord. We're approaching your throne boldly, Lord, like you said in your word, God. And we're just lifting these people up, Lord, with their physical needs, their spiritual needs. And, God, we just pray you would answer these according to your divine will, Father. And, Lord, help us to be a help to people around us, Father. Uh, help us to pick up the phone, Lord. Be an encouragement, God. And help us can have all this extra time, Lord. Help us to pray, Lord, and seek your face, Lord, through this time. And, Lord, we do love you and we praise you. And pray you bless the rest of the service. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, this time, go ahead and get your Bibles out. Turn to Acts chapter 16. The preacher's about to preach. But before that, we have Miss Hannah Poole on the clarinet and Andrew Acock on the piano for our special music.
I want everyone at home to put your hands together. Great, great job. We can hear that thunderous applause all over the county. Great job, Miss Hannah Poole and Brother Andrew. Glad that she could sneak in and join us this evening as they shared with us that clarinet and piano duet uh, to encourage our hearts. Acts chapter 16 is where we find ourselves at this evening. As we look to the Word of God, let me just mention to you yesterday, I mentioned at the very top of the church service tonight that we sent out through our Facebook Live uh, a encouraging uh, Easter message for troubled times. I want to encourage you for those who are on Facebook this evening, if you have yet to share that with your friends and your families, please tonight at the close of the service, not only share this service, but share that with your family and your friends. It is also an invitation for how they can join us for Easter this coming Sunday. And so again, watch that if you have yet to watch that. Share that if you've yet to share that. And let's do what we can to encourage others in this day. We've also set a goal this coming Easter, uh, not only uh, for folks to tune in and to watch, but last Sunday I said, you know, let's see if we can set a record and have over 2,000 views of the Easter services for folks to join us. And we understand that a view may mean two, three, four people are watching at one time. And, and last I checked, I believe we've got about 2,100 people that have viewed this past Sunday service. So maybe I set the bar a little too low. Maybe our goal needs to be 2,500 or 3,000 views and 50 shares. I believe we have about 39 shares. So again, uh, let's do what we can while we can in this moment to reach people for Christ, to encourage others in these days. Acts chapter 16. Let's pick up our reading this evening in verse number 9. This deals with the Apostle Paul. He is at a crossroads in his ministry. He has a desire to go and to carry the gospel where it's not been carried, to help the hurting, to evangelize the lost, to edify those who are believers who have heard of this Jesus, that have trusted Christ, but do not have a church to be able to worship in or to grow in their relationship with Christ. And in verse 9 of Acts 16, the Bible says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over in the Macedonia, and what are these two words? Let's say them out loud at home together. Help us. After he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go in the Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Let's pray together. Father, I love you. And I pray now that you'd bless the reading of your word. Lord, oftentimes when we read this passage and we hear it taught in Sunday school or preached about from the pulpits, we'll often refer to this as the Macedonian call. Even one of the great hymns of the faith deals with the Macedonian call today, send the light. Lord, I believe as we look to this passage, there are some truths contained here. Not only are good for every season of our lives, but Lord, are very important in the moment and the hour that we live in the season. So, Father, I pray that you'd speak to me and through me. Use me in this hour, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, tonight we're going to continue our Wednesday evening sermon series entitled Men and Women of the Bible. You know, as we study the lives of others, there is so much that we can learn from the men and women of scriptures. I'm reminded of a quote that Eleanor Roosevelt gave many years ago. We'll put it up on the screen for you. And it goes simply like this. As learning from the mistakes of others, you can't live long enough to make them all yourselves. Again, learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make them all yourselves. And the reality is, many of the lessons that we learn in this life comes from the successes, the failures, and the mistakes that others make. And so as we 
dig into the scriptures. By the way, one of the proofs of the authenticity of the Word of God is the fact this evening that when we read the Word of God, not only does it give us the good points about the people that we read about, but also when we study the scriptures, we also see their mistakes. We see their shortcomings. We see their sins. We see their failures. And so as a result of that, we get the whole counsel of the scriptures that are able to help us as we endeavor to live for Jesus Christ. And the night as we dig into this particular passage, we introduce to a man that the Bible does not give us his name. It reminds me of a Western I watch on TV sometimes. It's called the Virginian for you Western fanatics out there. The Virginian was the character, the man with no name. Well, here in Acts chapter 16, we're introduced to the man who has no name. He's simply referred to as the man from Macedonia. Now, the man from Macedonia, that country in that region, we're going to throw a map up there on your television and computer screen to show you geographically. You'll see there in the center of the map, right up above, Achaia is the country, the providence of Macedonia. That is modern day Europe. Matter of fact, six of the Baltic countries find their regions and their geography in modern day Macedonia. And this area of the map in the day in which Paul preached represented a part of the world who had never received the gospel of Jesus Christ. By the way, thank God that Paul went to Macedonia. Thank God that Paul was willing to go to Europe because many of our ancestors would have never heard the gospel, would have never received Christ had it not been for the Macedonian call on the Apostle Paul. And yet, here in this passage, through the Macedonian call, we see some things from this man, from Paul's response, and even from the work of the Holy Spirit that I believe is crucial in this hour that we live in dealing with the coronavirus here in 2020, here dealing this week. And so tonight for the next few minutes, I want us to look at this passage of Scripture as we consider this subject, the man from Macedonia. The man from Macedonia. There are three observations I see about this man, the Apostle Paul, and the work of the Holy Spirit that I believe is crucial to helping us in this hour that we're living in. Notice with me three things that we see in the text. Notice first of all in verse number 9, we're going to look at what we're going to call the night the plea. The plea. Notice with me again here in verse number 9. The Bible says, There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed, saying, Come into Macedonia and help us. If you make it a practice to write in your Bibles, I want to encourage you to underscore or circle those two words, Help us. Here in verse 9, we see a man who represents not only his family, not only his person, but his country, his entire region. And he's looking for help. Listen, when they were dealing with a dark time of no gospel message being preached in their country, in the world at that time, and I thought about that man and his desperate plea for help. And I think about so many Americans. Folks here in our community, folks in eastern North Carolina, folks around the United States, even folks around the world, that because of COVID-19, they find themselves in a dark place. They find themselves in a depressed state. They find themselves in a desperate state. They find themselves scared. They find themselves worried. They find themselves fretting. And they're looking for help. Will somebody please? There's a lot of hurting people that are watching this service tonight. There's a lot of working, hurting people in our community, in our state, and around the world. Notice some of the folks who are hurting because of the coronavirus. According to the Wall Street Journal, there are 14.4 million jobs that are going to go away. And there's a chance they will not return when this thing is over with. Just at the end of March, during the last two weeks of March, 
10 million with an M Americans filed for unemployment and the numbers keep spiking up every single day. There's a lot of small business owners who are watching the night service. Folks that you know, folks that maybe you work for, folks that maybe are in your family that are bombarding the banks right now trying to get loans through the CARES Act, the Stimulus Act that was passed by the government to try to keep the doors open, to pay their employees, to have the money, to, to keep it going before they see a lifetime of work go down the drain. There's a lot of depressed people right now. I was reading one article today that says COVID-19 is likely to lead to an increase in suicides. Let me give a quote to you that I read in one of the articles. It says that the psychological repercussions of this crisis could make the tragedy even worse. Listen, there's something more than a monetary problem going on. There's nothing more going on here than the fact that people are dying each day in America. Anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 people here in this moment are dying every day. But there are folks whose nerves are shot, whose lives are up in flames, and they're willing to, in their mind, end it all to get out of it. There's a lot of folks who are looking to the bottle for the answer in these days. I read an article the day online that says America is drinking its way through the coronavirus. Let me share with you just some statistics in the last 30 days. According to the federal government, 55% of Americans 18 years of age and above have drank alcohol in the last 30 days. That means if you have to go to the grocery store to get some groceries. That means if you have to go out to the gas pump to, to pump gas. That means if you have to go to the pharmacy to pick up your, your, your medicine. Wherever you may have to go. Listen, for one out of every two people you meet, according to those statistics, sometime in the last 30 days, they've looked to the bottle to give them some type of relief, some type of answer, some type of escape from the stress that they're feeling in these days. Oh, listen, there's a plea crying out in America, will somebody please help me? Will somebody please encourage me? Will somebody please show me a way out of this difficult time that we're walking through? The man of Macedonia, he was crying out, will somebody please come and help me? There are so many people today crying out, will somebody please come and help me? We see the plea, but not only we see the plea in this passage, but then I want you to see the prodding in this passage as well. Notice with me in verse number 9. The Bible says, And, what's those next two words? Let's say them aloud. A vision. A vision. Hey, where did this vision come from? Who gave the Apostle Paul this vision? Who was working behind the scenes to help the man from Macedonia? Who was speaking here? Who was doing the prodding to bring help to a hurting heart? Well, notice with me the answer is found in verses 6 and 7 of Acts chapter 16. The Bible says, Now when they had gone through Pergia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the, let's say these two words aloud together, Holy Ghost, to preach the word in Asia. Verse 7, after they were come to uh, Mycenae, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the, what's that word, capital S, Spirit suffered them not. Understand this tonight, that the Holy Spirit of God, the third member of the Trinity, was at work in this passage directing the actions of the Apostle Paul to help the man in Macedonia, the country of Macedonia, the people of Macedonia that was hurting and listening tonight. I'm convinced from the bottom of my heart this evening here on this Easter week here in April, the Holy Spirit is at work today. He's moving. 
moving in the hearts of born again, blood bought children of the king who will listen to his voice, who will hear to his prodding the Holy Spirit through the work of the power of the God of the universe is at work to help the hurting in this hour. The question is, and I are we listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? I, heard a, I read a quote today and I thought it was very powerful. It says, the Holy Spirit's voice is as loud as you're willing to listen. The Holy Spirit's voice is as loud as you're willing to listen. I want to ask you a question, dear Christian. Not are you keeping up with your 401k and your stocks in the stock market. Not are you watching the daily uh, uh, briefings from the president and the vice president and the coronavirus task force. Not how are you trying to follow the executive orders of Governor Cooper and keeping up with the latest fatalities of this great disease. But no, tonight I'm asking you, in this hour, are you walking with God? Are you on praying ground? Are you listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God who's trying to prod us and lead us on how to help the hurting in these days? I'm convinced right now the Holy Spirit, perhaps in a way like he has not in many years, is allowing us to see this opportunity as a way to reach out and help people that are hurting. I've found throughout the years when people are hurting, folks typically are willing many times to drop their guard. and Let those who will love them to Jesus come in and help them in this hour. I'll ask you, are you listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God? Is he prompting you? Mate, listen, maybe you need to get on the phone and start calling and checking on people. Maybe you need to start sending out some text messages. Maybe the Lord has put someone on your heart and you've yet to text them to encourage them or check on them. Listen tonight, as soon as the service is over with, type it in, hit send. We need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God. Maybe this evening the Lord wants you to send an email to someone. Maybe through the Facebook Live services, the Holy Spirit wants you to do a better job of sharing the gospel preaching services with others. Listen, maybe the Holy Spirit's been impressing on your heart to spend more time praying. Listen, maybe the Holy Spirit of God has been impressing on your heart that you need to be a better witness for Jesus. By the way, something I'm going to work on and I want to make available. I know we're living in social distancing times. I know sometimes we can't get face to face with someone and talk to them and give them the gospel like we would at a different time in history. And so something I'm going to work on is I'm going to sit down one day and I'm going to take about three or four minutes and I want to give a clear presentation of the gospel, witnessing to someone and sharing with them how they can trust Jesus as their Savior. We're going to upload it on our YouTube page. I'm going to send the link to all the cell phones that I have in my contact list that attend our church. And I want to encourage you to take that link, send it to your lost loved ones. Send it to your lost neighbors. Send it to your lost co-workers. Tell them you love them. Tell them you know they're going through a difficult time in this hour. But the answer is in Jesus. He is still the answer. And I believe the Holy Spirit in these days is directing and moving in ways like we maybe haven't seen him at work in America in a long time. This tragedy, this difficult hour that we're going through can be a time if we'll listen to the Holy Spirit that he can use us to minister to people in ways that we've never been able to minister to before. Again, like the quote that we put up on the screen a moment ago simply goes like this. The Holy Spirit's voice is as loud as you're willing to listen. Are you listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God? We see the plea for help. We see the prodding. But notice here in this passage, as we begin to bring this character's story to a close, I want you to see with me finally the performance of the Apostle Paul. Look with me, if you will, in verse number 10. And after he had seen the vision, what is that next word? Let's underline it, circle it, and say it out loud at home tonight. Immediately. We endeavored to go in the Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Notice how Paul responds to the prodding of the Holy Spirit of God. 
to the plea from the man from Macedonia. The Bible says he immediately went to help them. That word immediately, it literally is defined as at once. Instantly, right now, without any intervening time or space. Immediately, and may I say something tonight, dear church, and those who are watching our services at home, the time for action is now. We have no idea how long this time that God has opened up this unique ministry door to reach the masses for Christ, to encourage the discouraged for Christ, to reach and reclaim the backsliders for Christ. We have no law idea how long this door will remain open, but the time to act is now. We need to work like the hymn writer penned the words. For the night is coming. Years ago as a child, I heard a story. I tried to look it up on the internet and could not find it, and so... As best I remember the story, there was a man who had been sentenced to die. His family, his friends had reached out to the governor's office all the way up to the day of his execution, trying to plead their case, trying to show evidence that they had found and had convicted the wrong man. And finally, on the day that he was to be executed, the governor ring the family, said, listen, I have looked at the evidence, I've considered the situation, and I have decided to pardon your family. Remember, come down and get the pardon. Carry it over to the warden's office, and your loved one can go free. Remember, the family went down to the governor's office, got the pardon, stuck it in their pocket. And on their way to where the execution was to take place, they got delayed, they got distracted, they got detoured. When they got there to the prison where the execution was to take place, they walked in and says, listen, hey, I need to see the warden. Here's the pardon for my family member. They're to be executed today. It's signed by the governor. Here's the pardon. The person that received them says, I'm sorry. I've got terrible news for you. It's too late. You know, as we're in this hour right now, the time to act is not two weeks from now, two months from now. Listen, the time to act, the time to reach out, the time to reach the lost, the time to reclaim the backsider, the time to encourage and discourage, the time to act is now because there is no tomorrow. Listen, as Brother Justin said, we're getting ready, if the Lord spares His coming, to have an Easter Sunday unlike anything we've ever had before in the history of Mount Calvary Church and maybe the history of the world. If I would have told you last year that on Easter Sunday, instead of gathering in a church auditorium, there would be a worldwide pandemic, and we would have to gather on property in our automobiles and listen through our radios or experience Easter around a computer or around a phone or around a TV set that's plugged into an electronic device to watch Easter. You'd have looked at me and said, Preacher, you bumped your head. You've lost your mind. Listen, but that is the hour that we're living in. Folks, I don't know about you, but if this is the last Easter that we have on this side of heaven, I want it to count for something. Listen, I want us to use this coming Sunday to try to reach more people for Jesus Christ than we ever have before. I'm reminded of the words of the songwriter, only one life, soon it will pass, only what's done for Christ will last. I read a quote today from a man by the name, I believe his name was Alan Bennett, that said sometimes there is no next time. There's no timeouts. There's no second chances. Sometimes it's either now or never. Listen, for that person that's on the verge of taking their life, it's either now or never. For that alcoholic, listen, that's been hitting the bottle every day after every day after every day, it's either now or never. That business owner, listen, that's on their last leg right now and is just almost out of their mind, it's now or never. That person right now that's watching their retirement shrink up and 
their hope has been in what they've been accumulating in this life, giving no thought to eternity. God has got their attention. It's either now or never. Listen for that man who's filed unemployment and has watched his world turn upside down. It's either now or never. Paul immediately got up and said, let's get over to Macedonia. He needs help and God used me to help them. Right now, people all around us are looking for help. And we know that the answer is not in the U.S. government. The answer is not in all the other places the world is looking. But we know the answer. The answer is in Jesus. King Jesus. And who does the Lord use to bring that help to a world? He uses you. He uses me. I'm reminded of a story I heard years ago about some soldiers in World War II. Bombs were falling everywhere and they were looking for somewhere to take cover and there was an old abandoned church. They walked into the old abandoned church and they slid up underneath some pews until finally the shelling and the bombing had stopped. When they got up and everything was quiet, they noticed up in the church there was an old statue of Jesus. There on that statue they noticed that both of the arms of Jesus had been blown off from the shelling and the bombing. But on that statue there was a note affixed to it that said these words. Jesus has no arms. He only has yours. This hour that we're living in, we're the arms of Jesus. We're the voice for Jesus. We're the heart's for Jesus. People are crying, people are pleading, people are looking for answers and we have the answer and his name is Jesus Christ. May we be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and may we immediately seize this moment, this hour that God's placed us in to try to help the world around us for Jesus Christ. Would you bow with me for prayer? As you sit there in your living room, around your kitchen table, bedroom, hotel room, wherever you may be watching this service tonight, I want to ask you, are you listening to the Holy Spirit of God? During this service tonight, has the Lord been speaking to your heart? Maybe you find yourself like this man from Macedonia, pleading for help. Maybe you feel like your world here in these last 60 days, 30 days, has been turned upside down. Maybe you're scared about financial things. Maybe emotionally you're in a wreck. Listen, maybe tonight you, you just feel like you're about ready to pull your hair out. and You're like, somebody please help me. Listen, I've got good news for you. Jesus is still the answer. You know what? Your situation has not gone beyond his eyesight. Your cries have not gone beyond his ear gate. He hears you. He sees you. He knows what you're going through. Maybe tonight the first thing that you need to do is if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can't have the peace of God to get you through this until first of all you have peace with God. Maybe right now what you need to do is bow your head and say, Lord, I know that I'm a dirty, rotten sinner. I'm wicked. I'm on my way to a devil's hell. And I know just like at Easter, listen, look, this Friday, we're going to celebrate Good Friday. I realized that 2,000 years ago, you died on a roll rugged cross for my sins and the sins of the world. And tonight, I ask you to please forgive me. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. I receive you. Forgive me, Lord. Tonight, if you'll ask God to forgive you and be your Savior, not only will you have peace with God, we go through this time you can have the peace of God he can see you through maybe you're watching tonight maybe you you're, you're a born again believer but you know that things haven't been right with you the Lord and in these days maybe God's been trying to get your attention calling out to your name in that still small voice come on home come on home son come on home daughter I love you I want to restore you back to proper fellowship come on home Jesus still hears the voice of the cry Maybe you're saved and you love Jesus, but listen, right now, you're just facing some difficult times. God hears your cry. I want to ask you tonight, are you listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Has he been prodding you? Are there some things that God wants you to do in these days that you're not doing? Would you just get on your knees right now and say, Lord, 
whatever you want me to do, Holy Spirit, in these days, I'm willing. Lord, whatever you want me to say, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, God, I'm willing to show me. I'm willing. Speak to me. Help me to get still, Lord, so I can hear the voice of God. Maybe right now the Holy Spirit said, listen, the time to act is now. Work for the night is coming. The man from Macedonia, Father, you know our hearts, you know our needs. Holy Spirit, you've applied it across the airways to our hearts and our homes, our hotels, wherever we're watching this, in the way that you see fit. God, now may we not only hear the voice of God, but Lord, may we act on it. Hear our prayers. Help us in these days, we pray. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen and Amen. I want you to do something for me. Just a moment ago when you watched this service, if you prayed and received Jesus Christ as your Savior, or maybe you rededicated your life back, Lord, you've made a spiritual decision. I want to hear from you. Won't you text me and let me know about it? My cell phone number is 910-358-4354. I want to hear from you. My wife wants to hear from you. We want to be a help to you in these days. Please take a moment as soon as we go off the air, if you're on Facebook, to share tonight's service with all in your Facebook friend circle so that we can get the gospel and good news out to others. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget, Sunday morning, 11 a.m., weather permitting, drive-in style service. Come in on the property, stay in your cars, turn your radios on to 100.1. You can hear it from the comfort of your cars. We'll be on Facebook Live as well for those who are more comfortable staying home, watching the service. I'm going to be looking for you Easter Sunday. Until then... 11 o'clock Easter Sunday morning and also 8.30 on Go Mix Radio. We have Look and Live every Sunday morning. Tune in. I'll be looking for you. God bless you and good night.